almost a year in the making, but I finally have a functioning, workable, high vacuum setup. Let me take you through it. So last time I made an update on this, I had just gotten a turbo pump and some other vacuum hardware. And now it's pretty much done. So um, first of all, there's a roughing pump here. This is a two-stage rotary vein pump. And it just has a reinforced hose going up behind this system here. To a shutoff valve here, this is called the... F everything between these two pumps is called the four line. So it has a shutoff valve here, so I can isolate the two. This is very good because otherwise, if this suddenly stops or is the pump stops, it can suck oil back in. Then we have a, a vacuum gauge here. This is an Edwards APG active piranha gauge, and this is just a complete unit. You just give it 24 volts and uh, it gives you a 0 to 10 volt output. Uh, so it's very easy to interface. And uh, some more flanges here, some more hose here. I've decoupled these two, I'll tell you why later. And this then feeds into the turbo pump. This is the output port of the turbo pump. So this is the turbo pump. This is an Edwards EXT. 255H, which is a fairly standard little turbo pump seen on a lot of mass spectrometers. And on top of that, I just have an an angular piece like that, 90 degree bend here, with uh, with two KF25 ports. One is just blanked off. One has a high vacuum gauge. This is another Edwards gauge. This is an AIM gauge, an active inverted magnetron gauge. And clamped to the front is a large nice viewport which might be pyrex might be quartz might just be window glass i have no idea i got it on ebay <laughs> but it's glass at least uh, and that's nice so you can you can monitor stuff in the chamber um the pump is controlled by this little controller here this is just one of those small uh, exdc controllers this is the 160 model this is actually like a vfd uh, it makes three phases ac out of 80 volt dc and um, the 80 volt come from this. This is the control unit for the turbo pump. I've built this myself. Um, I might show a video at some point showing what's inside it, but it's not very interesting. It's really just two mean well switch mode power supplies in series to get the 80 volts. Um, it has an on off switch here. It has a turbo pump speed output here, 0 to 100%. And that's just also a signal furnished by this little unit here, so there's no trickery there. Nothing I've built myself. <laughs> well, I've built it myself, but you know what I mean. It's not very hard. It's just, you know, adding gauges and dials and little lamps and uh, a few indicator lamps here. Furthermore, I have the vacuum gauges controlled by this box here, which, again, there's nothing in there. It's just a 24 volt power supply and some, some wires and then the gauges. And uh, annoyingly enough, these... Um, these Edwards gauges, they all go 2 to 10 volts, I think, so you can see if it's under 2 volts, it means the gauge is off. But either way, this is the, the four-line gauge. You can see that goes from atmospheric pressure and down to, uh, well, it says less than 10 to the minus 7, but uh, I don't know. I think it becomes pretty unlinear down in this range, because really, the, for the application of this, you never really get it below, you know, 10 to the minus third at least. This is the high vacuum gauge, that's this one, remember? Um, and it goes all the way down to 10 to the minus 9th, I think. Um, it uh, it excels up over the, uh, the, you know, the glass uh, hot cathode ionization gauges that, in that you can run continuously. I mean, it's very robust. I mean, you shouldn't turn it on while there's no vacuum on, but I mean, from the 10 to the minus 4th tor, it, you're not really going to damage the gauge. And it's pretty simple, it's just a magnet drawing out irons from like a, a penning iron source, I think, and uh, measuring the current in microamps, and then there's like an electrometer that uh, that displays it as, as volts. So it's, it's, it's not advanced, I mean, really all the, the science stuff and all the smart stuff is already in that box, that box, and that box. I've just connected them and, you know, Lego together these nice rack units here. Uh, well, nice, that's uh, debatable. But it works. It all works. And uh, oh, also, um, I've cut open the uh, I've cut open the eighty volt supply to the uh, the controller here, the pump. Monitor the power that the turbo draws because that's pretty indicative of 
how the turbo behaves and how it is like the bearing quality if, uh, if the bearing is bad it'll need all of its juice to to run the pump at full speed and uh, sometimes it might need might not even get to full speed but if it tapers off and doesn't really draw any power at all that usually means the pump is good so that's the setup and uh, i have this port here where i can introduce electrical feed throughs or uh, i can add you know, i could use a flexible hose or do whatever i could mount everything anything on here i wanted at some point i'd also like to get just like a, a blind flange here so i can use like a, a Kind of used like a bell jar, so I have like a, a base plate I can add stuff to. That's a, an easy way of making like large setups, just on like build them on the plate here and mount them. But uh, for now, this is uh, this is perfectly workable, and um, I'm not even cooling my turbo. It you see it has water hose adapters here, and it's usually water cooled. You can also exchange that for like a little fan. It all depends on how much you load it down. For a mass spectrometer that has like a leak on purpose to let in you know samples, there'll always be a tiny gas flow through it. And the pump will work much harder than it does here. This pump is just pumping on a static little vacuum chamber. And this is not a very large vacuum chamber by any means. So it's not really under a lot of load. It's, it's, it's being treated nice. But that unfortunately also means that you really cannot use this feature here. This is a bleed valve. You can open this and then it just vents the turbo somewhere in the molecular drag stage. Like halfway up the turbo. And that's supposed to be like a gentle way of letting in air while while you're powering down. The manual says you can do that without incident if it's below 50% rotational speed. I've done it once. I'm not very happy about it. So I'm just going to let it speed down on its own. Um, it doesn't take long. It speeds up in, in less than two minutes also. Now what to use this for? Um, well, I don't really have an application that needs it right now. It would be nice to try and do some sputtering maybe. Um, or maybe some, some plasma studies or something. There's a lot of things you can do. The problem is, you know, if you have a really good, like, you know, a, a nice vacuum chamber that just has the rotor vein pump, you can always just, you know, put a put in a marshmallow and watch it explode or <laughs> do something else. But this setup is so fragile that you can't really use it for, like, shenanigans like that. It's, it's too good. It's too nice. Um... If anything at all enters those rotor blade blades down there, uh, those will be spinning around 80,000 RPM. If anything touches those, they'll just the entire pump will just disintegrate. And on this long hose here, it'll just fly around the room like a mace. And uh, that's not a very nice prospect. Um, the pump is bolted down, as you can see here. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much the system. So um, I guess I should show you how it works or my procedure for starting it up. First of all, let's be able to mount. Let's give ourselves the opportunity to mount the power. Uh, now the system has rough vacuum and um, it holds the vacuum pretty well. I left it with rough vacuum overnight and uh, it stayed below 10 to the zeroth tor. So I don't think I have any gross leaks. Um, this is pretty good actually. I just leave it, you know, under a uh, rough vacuum with no pumps running just to not reintroduce water every time you um, every time you vent the chamber. What you do on a larger vacuum system is you'll have a valve instead of this, like a solenoid valve, and uh, you'll have like a dry argon supply or something. Um, but if you reintroduce water and contaminants every time you, you vent your pump just with atmospheric air, it takes forever to pump down the first time. Um, and of course, obviously, at a, in a lab, you could have this running for days on end uh, in a mass spectrometer uh, setup like this with a roughing pump like that and a turbo like this would run for half a year without being turned off with no problems. But uh, I can't really do that in a residential home. Either way, everything is ready. So let's turn it on. Let's turn on the roughing pump first. And the uh, the noise is going to be a little appalling. Okay, now let's uh, let's open this valve here, and as you can see, the four line pressure dropped a bit. But now that's open. There's uh, there's a continuous vacuum being drawn on this, and now we can turn on the turbo. Turn on. Turbo spins up. And as you can see, it's drawing a lot of power. It can draw something like 2.2 amps, and it definitely will.
you what looks like the blades is actually the static blades on the layer below. You can hear it winding up now and it's drawing about two amps. Roughing pump pressure is going down somewhere closing in on 10 to the minus second torque, which is actually really really good for an, a rotary vein pump. Let me get my head out of the way. I think we can turn on the, uh, the high vacuum gauge now. Yeah, and it's we already reached 10 to the minus fifth. And pump speed is already up to about 100%. Power draw is now so rapidly declining, which is good. The fact that it gets up to speed this fast is pretty impressive. I've never seen that before in a turbo. I think it's because the chamber is so small. And the pressure has reached approximately 10 to the minus 6 torque. And uh, I'm just going to let it run for like an hour or so, or two, to, uh, to get everything warmed up and see how far down it goes. I'll see you then. Right, the turbo has been spinning for a few hours now, and as you can see, the pressures are looking pretty good. The four line pressure here is almost 10 to the minus second torque, which is really good. And the high vacuum, as you see here, is right about two times 10 to the minus seventh torque, which is also not bad at all, considering it's only been running for a few hours. That's this active inverted macrotron gauge sitting here. Uh, so in order to reach like really really good vacuums like 10 to the minus 8 would uh, would require letting this run for a day or so. Uh, but this is pretty typical for a small vacuum vessel like a mass spectrometer after a few hours. So uh, I'm not worried about that at all. And as you can see the power consumption from the turbo, I've just cut the wire here, is um, Right around 270 milliamps at 80 volts. That's uh, that's in the late 20s of watts. That's uh, that's pretty good. That's uh, that's very good actually. Um, I'm not worried about that either. It's not struggling. This pump definitely isn't struggling. It's not getting warm either. It's a little warm. It's maybe I would say 35 degrees. Unfortunately, I ruined my thermometer, but it's about 35 degrees, I'd say. Um, so yeah, that, that looks really good. Um, now it does make a bit of a racket this turbo. Um, I've tried to reduce I've tried to reduce that by decoupling the uh, the input manifold here, the the four line, with some flexible hose so it doesn't sit and act as a, a tuning fork. Uh, and I've tried to put some like gel tape underneath it uh, to kind of decouple it. Um, it helped a lot. Before it was so loud that it deafened out the uh, the four line pump, but it still has a sound. I think that's just a normal operating sound. It doesn't change in pitch, and uh, you know normally you have to be a bit worried when turbos make a sound, but of course they're never silent. So I think this is pretty much just fine. All right, let's uh, let's go through the uh, turning off procedure. Uh, I don't think we'll get the pressure any further down tonight. So um, what you do? Is you shut the, you separate the two pumps by this shutoff valve here. Right now the turbo is completely separate from the rest. You turn off the pump. Light goes out. Power falls to nothing. And the turbo will now spin down over something like 20 minutes. Let's come back when it's done that. <laughs> 